To focus on his hands, there might be strings of a harp or fingers attempting to thaw. But playing cards leap like bingo balls or acrobats, the jarring of a carriage doing nothing to dissuade him. His face spells numb disengagement, vacancy suggesting he's unoccupied for hours, but his digits and that deck dance with all the grace of Glasgow, and like dominoes he captivates us, one by one from smartphone screen. Heads bob on a subway train contained by silence. He's oblivious to the dumbstruck looks from the passengers surround him. I always take a, I almost take a picture, but a poem serves him better. He escapes us at St Enoch's as the strip lights start to flicker. Pupils return to pixels, his bare seat sagging. An audience left hungry on a Thursday afternoon. Cards sitting static until he plays another tune. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott. Uh, welcome to Insta session number 42, uh, a week short of a one-year anniversary since I started these things. Um, and everything's going swimmingly well, isn't it? Um, yeah, so tonight my guest is uh, Kat Hepburn. Kat Hepburn is an award-winning spoken word artist and scriptwriter from Scotland. Um, her work has featured on BBC Radio 6 Music and STV and also at the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, she published her first book, Girlhood, a year or two back. And her brand new book, Dating and Other Hobbies, is published this week on Thursday by Burning Eye Books. So I'm going to invite Kat to join. Da -da -da. Get the screen up in time, but I managed to riff the the intro. I think I don't think I missed anything out, but we'll see. Hi, Laura. Hi, Kat. Hello. Sorry, am I early? <laughs> no, you're great. You're great. How are you? Yeah, buzzing. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. I'm excited about this. This is only my second Instagram live gig in a year. Really? Yeah. Oh, fair play. You've been on TikTok. Well, I'm trying to be this week, but yeah, I think I'm maybe a bit too old for it, but I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to be done with the kids. I've got no idea what it is. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> um, so your book's out in two days. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, yeah. I was feeling really like... A, a mixture of emotions, uh, including terrified and anxious and nervous, but like now it's getting close to, I'm like totally buzzing. I just want to set it out free into the world and seeing all the pre-orders come in and, and having such a good response from the readings that I've done has made me feel like nice. a bit more calm about it. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. It's just exciting. What's so the moment you press send on the final manuscript, you're like, ah, and you suddenly start like going back through it again or whatever. Yeah, I think like a lot of writers were just very like overthinkery, kind of anxious. And um, yeah, so I think it was a case of like, rather than it being like, oh, that's it done. I was just like thinking about it over and over again. But I think that's pretty yeah. normal. Did you find it different to when you did Girlhood? Well, it's like your tricky second album, isn't it? With Girlhood, it was just like, oh, write this thing and then put it out. And then I think with yeah. this, there's a lot more like thought put into it, um, which is a good thing, but also a bad thing because you can get yourself into like a spiral. But yeah, it was different. It feels, it feels like there's just more stuff gone into it and more thought, but yeah. you sort of grow as a writer anyway. So yeah, it feels yeah. like it kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, dating and other hobbies is like what happens after girlhood. Girlhood was just like the beginning and now it's like the next stage. Um, so, yeah. Nice. I like that. I like that. Um, great. Well, do you fancy sharing a poem? Yeah, of Any course. Tips? It was really hard trying to decide what to do first. Um, but yeah, I'll just I've, there's some really short pieces in here that, um, that I'll do as well as like a couple longer ones. But yeah, this one's super short. Um, we are high on mushrooms, fucking in the front room, tripping out our tits. Shit, we've burnt the chips. And that was called McCain, after <laughs> the most popular oven chip in the UK, I'm told, after a quick Google search. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, so yeah, do you want me to just keep reading? That was that was a great snapshot. I love that. I mean, <laughs> that, that, like, I can't think of a better first poem in all of the Insta sessions. <laughs> yeah. quality. I think um, like, so, sorry, on you go. Sorry. Um I was just gonna ask, is is there quite a lot of like little sort of snapshots like that sort of punctuating it dotted through it or 
Yeah, I wanted to experiment a little bit with, like, I used to write super long poems, like four minutes. And I, I, I love, like, I love those long ones, um, but I just feel like it can get a bit dense and a bit much. So I experimented this time with little short ones. They're not even as well thought out as haikus. <laughs> They're just like four lines that rhyme. And yeah, they just sort of zone in on a particular moment or experience. Yeah. No, I mean, they're harder to write, I think. Like, that, that, just get you, that, the one you just read, there's so many things going on and so many questions I want to ask. And it's just like, <laughs> bang, that's it, gone. Yeah, there's so, it. Many, there's so many layers to that shagging poem. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you've got to make well, every word count, haven't you? And then it's like, there's more yeah. pressure almost. But the short ones were so much fun to write because I just wrote them and then they just need a little bit of tweaking and that, that's them. Whereas when you're writing yeah. a short story, there's like so many different drafts. And so, yeah, I had yeah. a lot of fun with the short ones. Nice. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Um, are there any poems in this one that definitely could not be in girlhood? Or would you say the whole collection definitely? As in, you know, like sometimes there's a little bit of an overlap when you're between the collections. In a good way, I mean, you know, on that journey. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah there's a, there is a crossover because I turned girlhood into a play. There's yeah. two pieces from Girlhood the Play in the book. So if anyone uh, enjoyed the play but didn't see those pieces in the book, they're in here. So there is some crossover. But awesome. there's also some bits that are about that stage in your life where you're maybe like a bridesmaid and you're the only yeah. single one at the hen do. And, or like there's one like set on a woman's wedding day. So... I think that the girlhood character, it sort of finished with her when she was like 25. Yeah. So I think there's, this is like 25 to yeah, 30. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. So I think there's some more like mature pieces where there's more kind of stuff going on about babies and or rather like society's kind of expectations about those things at those ages um, that maybe yeah. wouldn't have been right for girlhood because she wasn't there yet. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Cool. That must be exciting, though, seeing, like, it sort of go from girlhood into girlhood, the play, and then into... Like, it must be nice to see in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of taken different forms, and, yeah, it was weird, because I wrote the book, and then I turned it into a play, and then I, people keep asking, like, oh, are you going to turn dating and other hobbies into a play? But I just feel like it suits being a book. Do you know when you just get a yeah. feeling, and, like, I feel like this is... Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's, there's so many different characters in this. In Girlhood, we sort yeah. of followed one. But in this yeah. one, I got to like explore lots of different characters. Nice, nice. Cool. Well, do you fancy sharing another one? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm going to read the second one in the book, and it's called What's Your Type? And it was written after doing um, a lot of research on a WhatsApp group with my girlfriends and just asking like what type of people they were into. Um, so yeah, this is like a collection of all the guys that my friends have slept with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys and girls. Uh, what's your type? CrossFit fanatics with designer dicks. Girls with short fringes who are into politics. Bespectacled cardigan wearing guardian readers. Broad shouldered rugby buffs who spray in their receders. Pasty eco-warriors who look like they don't wash. Tall, teethy, horsey people who don't like being called posh. Wiry academics who smoke rollies and drink craft beer. Coke-snorting DJs who have problems being sincere. Curvaceous <laughs> lassies bearing tattooed angel wings. Dominant older women who like to use sex wings. Men with big wallets, shiny heads and shiny shoes. Spice boys who get their teeth whitened and only shop and cruise. Guitar playing beach bums too stone to call you back. Angular jawed handsome megalomaniacs. Stero taking fuckboys who like to wear North Face. Busty garden fanatics who have expensive taste. Shorter than average life in souls always telling jokes. Emotionally unavailable artistic commitment phobes. <laughs> feel like a lot of us can relate to that one. Skater chicks with piercings, tats, fake tan and bands. Gobby daddy's girls who talk loudly with their hands. Overly assertive cat people with a pension for Merlot. Bearded men who drink tequila and practice thick and poke. Extroverted socialists who tweet more than they march. 
Workies with great chat who look sexy driving cars. Smoothie drinking gym bunnies with peachy bubble bums. Men who look like bikers but still live with their mums. False nail wearing sarcastic single mothers. Kind hearted introverted wannabe drummers. Shaved headed punks who bake their own bread. People who the minute you're over will sleep with your best friend. That's it. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. We all know pretty much all of them. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, dating. <laughs> do, you, do you miss it? Do you miss the, the, the messy, horrific funness of it all? Or are you just like, happy no. I'm over that stage? Yeah. I, it's, it's just, you don't realise at the time, do you, how chaotic it is? But yeah. You can write a passage, I guess. Yeah, um, of course. So... As you've explained, the girlhood goes up to the age of like 25-ish and then dating and other hobbies is like, say, 25 to 30. Mm -hmm. So if I'd handed you dating and other hobbies on the day that you finished girlhood, which poem do you think would surprise you the most? Oh, oh, that's such a deep question. Um, I think the short stories probably, like the... I'd, I wouldn't have said five years ago that I'd start publishing short stories, even though I've yeah. written them since I was... Um, a little girl I just didn't think that that's what I would do so yeah I would probably say the short story about the threesome because I didn't know I was going to be that brave <laughs> not doing it but writing about it because it's like yeah yeah writing sex scenes is a whole other thing like I think with poetry you can get away with it because of the humor but when it's a short yeah. story you're like I actually have to write what's going on here so I think probably yeah the short story about the threesome <laughs> It's interesting that you'd be like, not doing it, obviously, I mean writing it. Like, it's <laughs> like, I love that. I know, I know exactly what you mean, though, because it's really fucking hard to do, isn't it? Like, to write about stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, really... yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Interesting. Well, I look forward to reading it. <laughs> um, so, uh, it's 42 minutes past. You've got a bit of time. Are you fancy sharing us another poem or a short story or whatever you want to share? I'm not, I'm not going to read you a short story because they're still quite long, so yeah, I'm going to do, I want to do another poem for you, Matt. I'm going to do Circle of Shame, which is about, um, it was originally written about magazines, but like we've sort of moved on now. It's just like all the stuff that's online, like yeah. the Daily Mail sidebar of shame and all that shit. So yeah, yeah. I've kind of dragged it into uh, the modern day by changing a few things. But yeah, I wrote it a little while ago. It didn't fit for girlhood, but it feels right for, for this book. So it's called The Circle of Shame. The sidebar of harmless fluff in the daily fail teaches us to hate ourselves and other women and men. But hey, if they tell us what new lipstick to buy, it makes it okay then. They repeat the same old rhetoric about our potential beauty and good health, claiming to reveal that elusive secret that will finally make us happy. Our problems will vanish if we exude wealth. On the glossy surface and a glance at their interior, they look fun, but they're designed to make us feel inferior. Sai zero models on every page, encouraging the newest diet fad. They're there to make clothes look good and us feel bad. Obsessive and obscene celebrity culture, pap circling round people like hungry vultures, waiting for them to get, waiting to get the money shot of them getting out a taxi cab. Camera right under the skirt, hoping to snap the complete lack of pants. Mindless gossip, fabricated and exaggerated rumours, growing in young minds like deadly tumours. Spending time on our appearance is not a want, but a need. The illusion of personal choice is beginning to recede. Look how this multi-millionaire S has managed to lose all her baby weight and squeeze her ass into a tight dress. Shaming all you normal women without personal trainers or home gyms. Your life would be fine if only you were thin. Adverts on every single page encouraging you to spend, 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 spend money that you don't have, take out a loan, increase your overdraft, get a credit card, get into debt to get that great handbag, it's a must have. They promote slut shaming, nasty naming, demonization, fame turning on and attacking its very own creations. The magnifications of flaws, mistakes, problems and normality. 
These sights are a threat to our society. Star goes makeup free as she steps out her house. You can see her unmatching bra through that blouse. Crow's feet, bingo wings, saggy tum, cellulite bum. Oh, she's piled on the pounds after being dumped. A woman who is famous for her ability to sing, vilified for leaving her house without her wedding ring, the circle of shame. Can you believe that she's worn that outfit again? Ticks and tricks to change yourself so he will love you more. A quiz, how much sex are you having? Are you a virgin or a whore? Nine telltale signs that your boyfriend is cheating on you. All your problems will be solved when you buy this killer shoe. A new magical cream to make your skin look flawless. Rewind and reverse the natural aging process. Now, I'm old enough to make my own decisions, to look at things objectively and critically, but it's not me that I'm worried about. It's the young and impressionable little girls and boys who are taught from a young age to play with certain toys, to act a certain way towards one another, be strong and dominant like a father or weak and soft like a mother. They compare their imperfections to photoshopped creations, an alternative reality of unrealistic expectations. Misogyny is at its most toxic when it's turned inwards, encouraging us to spend money we don't have, raising a generation of girls who care more about the thigh gap than the pay gap. Is that? Still a last line. What a mic drop. Yeah, yeah. It's, Thank you. It's terrifying, isn't it? It's just, it's like, the more you delve into it, like, it's stuff that you don't question as well, isn't it? That's the worst thing. Like, you've highlighted that so powerfully, and it's so many things that you just think are normal, like. Yeah, I wrote that ages ago, because, like, I've worked with young people for, like, over 10 years, and I saw the growth of that kind of paranoia and um, focus on looks just get, like, more and more intense uh, over those 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine like, having a smartphone when you're a teenager? Like, it's <laughs> I know. Um, So, um, I, I was curious, um, how do you think, um, I know this seems like an obvious question, but how do you think the lockdown has affected your writing? As in, has it made you try out any other methods or think differently about certain things? Or have you I been think... going to like online stuff? Or yeah, well, I think like in terms of, Sonic Youth, the night that I run, we managed to go completely digital. So that was like a big learning curve. But it was good because we could tap into new audiences that weren't just in like Glasgow or Edinburgh or Stirling. And we could hire people from further afield, which was great. In terms of my writing, I felt like I just, my coping mechanism was just to like fully focus down on it. So I wrote, I wrote the first draft of this in the first six weeks of... The, the OG lockdown and I think wow. it was just a way for me to cope like some people cope by just like not doing anything and that's totally fine like there's no right or wrong way to cope but I think it just helped me like not think about like the global health <laughs> anxiety <laughs> I just yeah. was like I'm gonna write about blowjobs <laughs> and just like <laughs> not think about what's going on so yeah it was it was a really nice experience in, in a weird way of just like not having to go anywhere and just being forced to like stay home. But I mean, like I'm not a frontline worker, like hats off to anyone that's actually, you know, done anything like worthwhile with their time. Um, apart from writing about shagging, but yeah, I found it like I, I had more space to write and I had more time and I wasn't as tired because I was pure jumping about from place to place before. But yeah, yeah. it sort of just forced me to like focus in on like what I wanted to do. So, yeah, I'm quite grateful yeah. for that time. Good. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, yeah, because you, your workload is, from what I can see, is immense. Like, you know, Sonic you stuff and you do workshops and you, you are constantly on the go, aren't you? So, I guess it's just a sort of great opportunity for you. Well, yeah. And here's the book a year later. I know. And I'm, I'm now I'm constantly on the go, but I'm just sat in the same seat. I'm like, just constantly <laughs> doing Zooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're getting there. I mean, I don't, I don't know how it's going to change, but anyways, um, it's 10 to, so if you've got any that you specifically want to read, uh, now's the time. But I don't want to pressure you to do it either, it's, it's, it's tell it to you. Um, I am going to read, okay, I'm going to read one medium one and then one and then two really short ones, is that okay? Cool, yeah. Okay, 
it's not even immediate one, it's dead short. But anyway, it's called Empty Tracky. Um, he tossed me about like an empty tracky jacket, crunched me up like an old crisp packet, spread me thin like lurk pack on burnt toast, abandoned me to stew like a Sunday pot roast, left me hollow like a bog roll tube, crushed me between his teeth like a big ice cube. He put me out like a fagged out, halted sex mid-flow to put on a bet, refused to wear a condom, his bedroom was a caper nom, told me he'd pay me back, talked shit behind my back, laughed when he left a, <laughs> when he left a red handprint on my left bum cheek, didn't text me back for two whole weeks. So why does my heart sing every time my phone goes ping? <laughs> yeah, man, that, that was <laughs> brutal in so many ways. Like, I thought that spreading Lurpak on burnt toast was going to be the most brutal line. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at first it started off as like it was all going to be like food metaphors and then it just yeah. like unraveled into something else. It was based on a, yeah, not based on personal experience, but based on a, a, something a friend told me. So yeah, yeah. this, ar- this arsehole is now immortalised in, uh, in this book for, <laughs> for years to come. Or, or at least the, the dirty deeds are immortalised so that they can feel shame when they read it. Like Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah, brilliant. Wow. I mean, that was, yeah, these poems are so good. I can't wait. Um, Thank you. So, how did you find the experience? Was was the first book with speculative books? Is that right? Yeah, first, Girlhood was with speculative books, and this was with Burning Eye. I just wanted to go with a different publisher just to try and widen my reach. um, Yeah. And, yeah, just to sort of see what it was like. So, yeah, it's it's been a great experience. Burning Eye are brilliant, and They've been so supportive and just like, it's just been so thorough. I think I will definitely publish again with speculative books because they're they're brilliant too. But yeah, it's been a good experience so far. I think if the pandemic wasn't here, I'd be doing a wee English tour, but maybe that'll still happen at some point. Oh yeah, it will, it will, it will. And it's their uh, 10th birthday next year, isn't it? So there's going to be loads of stuff going on. Who's your favourite Jamie I poet? I'm going to put you on the spot that you can think of. Mm, I love Maria's last. I love Maria's <laughs> last collection. I did. I think I, I wouldn't try to set you up to say that. Like, sorry, I was just curious. No, no, um, it's okay. It's, it is hard to pick, but yeah, it is really tough. And I, I get asked this a lot, and I'm kind of like panicky. But yeah, yeah sorry, I think, yeah, I great. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked that, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, but, you know, Bernie and I, they've got such an incredible, like, collection of artists. Like, it, it, it's it's like, it's almost like a political movement in itself, isn't it? Like, Bernie and I, what Bernie and I have done, it's amazing. Yeah, and they're giving space to spoken word artists who maybe in the past were shunned by, like, yeah. page poetry. It's like, it's like merging those two things together, which is... Yeah, amazing. I mean... The first, like, Selena Godden's first collection was on Burning Eye. Like, mm-hmm. it's mad to think. It's, yeah. Well, hats off to him. Um, yeah. Great. Sorry, I'm not playing too much. I should let you share. Sorry. I was just That's curious good. how you found it. Yeah. Um, so I'll do another one? Yeah, cool, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to do... I'm going to do a short one again. Um, this is called Blowjob. It's funny when you go through like writing a book and you, you end up spending so much time trying to make decisions about whether to call a four-line poem Blowjob or BJ. But anyway, it ended up being called Blowjob. Um, you can ask, you can beg, but if you push my head, I'll kick your balls instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I can't argue with that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've just got like one more tiny one to do. Do you want me to do cool. that? Yeah, okay. sure. Um, so this is the final one in the book. I should say as well, I'm going to try and find a page for it for you to show. There's there's some illustrations in here by an amazing oh, um, nice. Berlin-based artist called Robin Claire Anderson. So there's four chapters in the book, and the final chapter is like it's a little bit of a downer compared to the rest of it because it's like about about missing stuff um right so yeah so this is the final piece in the whole book um and it's called ghost i thought we had a good time i even gave you head then you decided to ghost me is it cause you're dead (laughs) 
Ghosting. That's got to be, yeah. I mean, ghosting's just a fucker in it. I can't. I think it's like, Ooh. yeah, you're just Googling to be like, has he, like, is he, is he dead or does he just not like me? And then it's like, oh, no, he's been online. He just doesn't want to speak to me again. <laughs> Yeah, no, oh, it's just so grim. Well, um, it sounds like there's loads packed in there that everyone needs to read. Um, it sounds like it's a really important book uh, for, well, for everyone, like women, the women of the girlhood age to read this and, you know, for everyone to read. And also, by the sound of it, like, a lot of men to read to maybe see some of the behaviour laid out in black and white as well. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be... Like with girlhood as well, they're they're not huge books. This is a bit thicker, but it's like a good toilet book because you can dip in and out. <laughs> so maybe some like boyfriends and husbands will will get some home truths. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Sounds yeah. Good. So you've got copies to pre-order and sell on your big cartel site, right? Yeah, that's right. The link's in my bio of all my social media. Um, and I'll be changing it from pre-order to just order on Thursday, which is going to be hugely exciting for me. I bet you're looking forward to that, going in the yeah. quick editing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, look, thanks so much for sharing your time tonight and for, um, and for sharing your poems. It's a really exciting time. Thank you for having me, Matt. It was great to see you as well. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to seeing you on an actual stage at some point. I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> cool. All right, well, I'll take care. See you later. Thanks, Matt. Take care. Bye. Bye. Kat Hepburn, whose uh, who's new book, Dating and Other Hobbies, is out on Thursday this week on Burnley and I Books, so make sure you pre-order it direct from Kat. Uh, and if you're watching this on Thursday onwards, order it direct from Kat, support independent poets and independent artists. I think she was absolutely wonderful. It sounds like a, a really important book for everybody to read. Um, so check that out. Check out the rest of Burning Eyes books as well and speculative books as well, to be fair. And also check out Sonnet Youth. Cat uh, does loads of amazing work supporting poets from all over the shop through uh, Sonnet Youth. Um, so, yeah, great. Uh, join us next week. Our guest is Patrizia Longhitano. Uh, my name is Matt Abbott. We are in some thugs. See you later. Cheers. Yeah.